National Nutrition Interviews, the natural health experts, up close and personal. Dr. Zoltan Rona is one of Canada's most well-known practitioners of complementary medicine. A graduate of McGill University Medical School with a degree in clinical nutrition, Dr. Rona is a past president of the Canadian Holistic Medical Association. You'll know him from his best-selling book, Vitamin D, The Sunshine Vitamin. His clinic is located in Toronto, where he has practiced for nearly 30 years. A TV guest and lecturer across North America, Dr. Rona is the formulator of TriStar Naturals Clinical Potency Supplements and consults with the maker of Vital Greens and Nutriflex, NACA Herbs. He's also a National Nutrition Interview guest. I'm Dr. Zoltan Rona and I'm a medical doctor. I've been practicing uh, alternative and complementary medicine for over 35 years. Well, what I love most about my profession is the um, ability to help people without the use of drugs and helping them both prevent as well as treat diseases using natural remedies that get to the cause or the source of whatever the problems may be. I've learned a great deal in practicing over 36 years, but one of the most important things that I've learned is to listen to my patients because they often will uh, give me the answers as to uh, how to help them the best. And I've also learned that people don't go by the book. Um, and as a result of that, we have to treat people as individuals and find out what works for them as opposed to what works in a textbook. Those are the main things that I've learned over the years. Uh, I've learned a great deal from other doctors as well. So I make a point of attending um, a lot of conferences uh, in the States and around the world. In fact, I was, last year I was in Dubai in the United Arab Emirates and uh, there was a fantastic conference over there and I learned a great deal from some of the lecturers there. So I continue to do that. So that, that's basically what I've learned over the years. These things are just generally not taught in medical schools and most medical doctors have no training whatsoever in uh, natural therapies, diets, or anything like that. So uh, for the most part, if you're not up on something, you're usually down on it. And that's basically why doctors are just not interested. Well, there have been quite a few changes, but I think that the major change that I've seen is that there are far more uh, studies done by universities and done by a lot of scientists and published in peer-reviewed medical journals on the use of natural therapies. For example, vitamin D is uh, uh, pretty hot these days and there's uh, been a lot of conferences, a lot of uh, published studies on vitamin D just for one. But there is a growing interest in the field and as a result, a lot more research being done than ever before. I think the most dangerous drugs are what are called the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, the NSAIDs. Uh, a lot of people take them without thinking that it can cause the gastrointestinal bleeding and can cause macular degeneration and can cause all kinds of gastrointestinal problems, leaky gut syndrome, etc., etc. So people take them and they get a quick fix, but unfortunately the long-term consequences of using those things, uh, you know, for example, in the United States there are 16,000 deaths every year as a result of NSAIDs. Uh, so, this is a caution, this is one of the most uh, uh, underrated, uh, dangerous drugs out there. Of course, there are other drugs like cortisone, like prednisone. I wrote a whole big article on uh, alternatives to prednisone or uh, steroids in, in one of the issues of vitality last year. And, uh, you know, that's another drug that has such a myriad of side effects that, uh, including osteoporosis, psychotic behavior, uh, obesity, diabetes, and you name it, <laughs> just about. So that's another drug that's very, uh, quite toxic. The other one is, believe it or not, acetaminophen, otherwise known as Tylenol. And the number one cause of uh, liver transplants in North America these days is Tylenol overdose. So, uh, you know, that's another drug. We, we basically uh, have people taking these like candies, unfortunately, and they end up with liver problems of all types. And unless they 
looking to some kind of alternatives or at least to protect themselves from damage by these drugs that uh, you know we're really creating more problems than we're solving. Well I think the most important thing that you can do to change your health is to first get educated in the field of nutrition. Find out what is the right thing, uh, what kind of diet is the right thing for you to be doing. The second thing would be to uh, get into some form of exercise. Physical exercise is tremendously important. Most people just don't seem to make it a priority and I think it should be a priority. And the third thing, in, in order for you to prevent a lot of illnesses, make sure you get adequate micronutrients. And the most important one would be vitamin D, as I've said often before, and also take a multiple vitamin and mineral supplement. So if you can do those three things, I think you'll go a long way towards changing your health for the better. It is not possible to get all the nutrients that you need from your food. And the reason for that is the way the food is processed and the fact that if you actually analyze food, look for all the different nutrients that you need for your daily requirements, you'll find that most foods that are sold in supermarkets or uh, elsewhere generally do not have all the nutrients that you need for your daily requirements. So you do need to supplement. Well, most of those additives, uh, preservatives, pesticides, uh, you know, various um, other additives, stabilizers, etc. These are chemicals that are foreign to the body and the body is not able to usually deal with them in an adequate way and eliminate them. So a lot of these chemicals, they get stored in our fat cells and they basically clog up our detoxification process. And as a result of that, I think they become toxic. We become allergic and more and more to these things and the body just can't deal with it. The number one most common nutrient deficiency in Canada is vitamin D. If you did a blood test on anybody in the middle of winter who is not supplementing with vitamin D, you'll find that between 80 and 90% of those people are vitamin D deficient. It's, it's virtually impossible to get toxic in vitamin D unless you take like 100,000 units for like months. Uh, I've been prescribing between 10 and 30,000 units for most adults and uh, I've not seen one case of toxicity. So it's uh, very safe to be using vitamin D in high doses. Well, the most common reason why people need to use nutritional supplements is because they are making up for deficiencies in their diets. They're, most people are under a great deal of stress and uh, you know, they're not sleeping enough, they're eating poorly, they have other uh, stressful conditions which all deplete them of nutrients. So if you happen to be a smoker, if you happen to drink a lot of alcohol, if you take various drugs, you will become deficient as a result of all that. And that's why you need to make up for it with some nutritional supplements. Just about everyone should take at least a multiple vitamin and mineral supplement and they should be supplementing with vitamin D. If you're an adult, you need between five and 10,000 international units of vitamin D a day. Most people who are under lots of stress need more B vitamins. They may need vitamin C. And then there are people that are, uh, for example, elite athletes or people that have had surgery recently or who are on medications who might need more of certain nutrients like coenzyme Q10, uh, vitamin E, trace minerals. In, in uh, cases of men with enlarged prostates, they may need uh, zinc supplements or they may need salt palmetto and other different formulas. So, I usually try to individualize uh, nutrients that are needed for the individual person depending on what their situation is. Well, TriStar is basically a company that was formulated by default because what I had asked NACA to do was to formulate one product for me for my office to sell in my office. Uh, and. They started off by making omega-3 capsules and omega-3 liquid. And I was very happy with that. And uh, the president of the company wanted me to put the same supplement into health food stores. So I said, why not? And uh, it got into virtually all the health food stores and it started to sell very well. So he, he approached me with um, helping formulate a whole bunch of other products. Now, now we have like over 
20 different uh, nutritional supplements from coenzyme Q10 to serapeptase to curcumin to multiple for men, multiple for women. And, and basically these supplements are all, are all formulated according to my specifications. There's no gluten in there, there's no soy products, no corn, no yeast. Uh, they're basically uh, free of any kind of uh, synthetic ingredients. And I think they're the highest quality supplements on the market today. Well, what I like about working with TriStar is that I, I, whenever I have an idea for a nutritional supplement, I can uh, basically sit down with the president of the company and uh, uh, tell him what I would like to see. For example, we've got a new one coming out called uh, Longevity Supremacy. And this one basically is a formula which will help not only prevent, but also reverse hardening of the arteries and help people live longer. So this formulation is coming out sometime in January of 2015 and I'm very excited about that. Well, by law, we have to uh, basically analyze each of the products that we put into a bottle. So we do toxicological studies and we do um, HPLC on them, which means that we analyze whatever's in the product and we do a biochemical analysis of it. So we are ensured that what we say is in the, in the product is really there. Well, inflammation is at the root of just about every chronic condition. I don't care what, what it is, whether you have cancer, neurological diseases, arthritis, cardiovascular disease, uh, cancer, uh, Parkinson's, whatever it may be, the process that produces the symptoms is called inflammation. So if you can control or reduce the inflammatory response that people have to various toxic um, ingredients in foods, or in our air and water, et cetera, you can really help control inflammation. If you could do that, you reduce the symptoms and you, you can reverse many of these chronic inflammatory diseases. Well, serapeptase is an enzyme that's derived from the silkworm and it has a very potent proteolytic properties. In other words, it will help digest protein a lot better. It seems to uh, also help digest a lot of the inflammatory uh, proteins in the blood that lead to chronic pain and chronic swelling and so on. So I've used it a lot in pain conditions. I've used it for uh, helping clear out some of the sludge from arteries, get rid of uh, dead tissue and plaque from the coronary arteries. It's also very mucolytic. In other words, it breaks down mucus. So people with chronic sinusitis or bronchitis, it's it's really wonderful for clearing that up. So I've used it quite a lot in my practice. I've seen some amazing results in people. Uh, I had one gentleman, for example, who uh, uh, about two or three years ago started taking it uh, for blockages in his carotid arteries. And we did Doppler ultrasound studies before, and he had like a 70% occlusion in his carotid arteries and he started taking serapeptase within three months, the, the occlusions were completely gone. So I know for a fact that when we do before and after studies on people with blockages in arteries, for example, it, it helps clear it up. So serapeptase uh, is one of my mainstays in, in helping people overcome chronic inflammation, chronic uh, obstructions, uh, you know, things like tendonitis and bronchitis, sinusitis, and quite a few other conditions. Well, curcumin seems to modulate the inflammatory response better than virtually any other single natural health product uh, besides vitamin D. I believe vitamin D is probably the most effective at modulating the immune response, but curcumin has been shown to help over 200 different conditions, uh, including uh, cancer and arthritis and dermatitis, and anything that's involved with the inflammatory process. Well, most people would be smart to use about a thousand milligrams of curcumin every day, and it should be the turmeric derived BCM95 version of curcumin. TriStar curcumin uh, contains something called BCM95. Uh, BCM95 is the extract that comes from turmeric, 
and has the highest absorption of any curcumin on the market. If you compare to the standard curcumins that are sold in health food stores, it's absorbed seven times uh, higher. The other issue is that there's a lot of curcumins that are sold that are basically derived from petroleum products. BCM95 or curcumin supremacy or NutriCure is uh, derived directly from turmeric and not from any petroleum products. So that's the real reason why. And all the studies that were done that show that curcumin is beneficial for inflammation were done with natural um, turmeric derived curcumin. All the curcumins on the market these days, they basically are derived from petroleum. And that's not what the studies were done on. They were done on turmeric derived curcumin. There's a big difference. Now, I, I spoke to one company, I'm not gonna mention it because I don't wanna get them all upset with me. They said, oh, it's the same thing. And if you actually do studies, that's how they can get the percentage of curcumin up. This. So they say that this is, uh, you know, a uh, thousand milligrams or whatever it is, and it's, it's a lot cheaper. But the trouble is that it's not what the studies were done with and the absorption rate is not the same. And we don't know whether it's safe or effective either. So the only one we know that is safe and effective is the one derived directly from turmeric. Now turmeric also has other compounds in there which are effective. Uh, so if you want to get a good anti-inflammatory uh, response, you have to use turmeric derived curcumin. And that, that extract is called BCM95. Well, because there were some idiotic people who were taking 600,000 units of vitamin D a day and they were getting like really high elevations of uh, uh, calcium and that's, that's a danger of too much vitamin D. But you know, how rare is that? I mean, most people are so deficient in it that even if they took 100,000 units for a whole year, nothing bad would happen to them because basically, uh, you know, most people need a huge amount to deal with stress, inflammation, viruses, Ebola, what have you. And, and, and basically, uh, you don't have to be worried about that. But when, when some people did develop vitamin D toxicity, the governments were in a panic and so they decided that they would overcompensate and what they ended up doing basically is uh, uh, prohibiting you know vitamin d levels in in bottles to they limited it to a thousand units per capsule which i think is ridiculous because in, if you went to uh, any other country in the world the states for example you can get vitamin d uh, 10,000 units per capsule or 20,000 25,000 so here in canada we've overcompensated for these rare individuals who got toxic using way too much. For example, in the 1930s or 1940s, they were using 600,000 units a day to treat acne. Well, of course it'll help with acne because, you know, basically it will elevate that protein in your blood that kills off whatever the bugs are. Um, but we don't have to go that high. To get a good result with vitamin D, we probably should be between four and 6,000 units a day, and that's perfectly safe. Well, vitamin D, one of the most interesting things about vitamin D is that the more you take of it, the more your body will manufacture a protein called cathelicidin. Now, cathelicidin is very interesting because it has natural antibiotic properties. It can help the body kill viruses, parasites, bacteria, and fungi. The higher that level of cathelicidin is, the more likely it is to do that. So that's why I'm telling people, take more vitamin D and you really don't need that stupid flu shot because the flu shot is loaded with mercury, formaldehyde, and all kinds of toxins. If I had a dime for every patient that told me that they got the flu or a cold or some kind of infection after they got the flu shot, I'd be a millionaire. Well, if you're an adult, you should be getting, according to the uh, top researchers in the world, you should be getting between four and 6,000 international units of vitamin D every day. That's if you're a healthy person. If, if you have certain physical ailments, if you have an autoimmune disease, if you have cancer, if you have heart disease, if you have other chronic inflammatory conditions, you may need up to 50,000 international units a day. For example, if you're a diabetic, you're far better off taking 50,000 than you are taking 10,000. And the risk of toxicity is virtually zero. In Canada, just about every adult is deficient in vitamin D unless they take a supplement. We do not get vitamin D from October to May in this country. We can't get enough from our food. In order to get adequate amounts of vitamin D, we'd have to drink about 40 glasses of fortified vitamin D milk per day, and not too many people are gonna do that. 
So I recommend between four and 6,000 for a healthy adult. For children, it's considerably less. I think probably for most kids over 12, I would say probably around 5,000. For kids over the age of, below the age of 12, probably between two and 4,000. So it's, it's individualized, but I think we're not getting enough vitamin D in our diets, and we're not getting enough vitamin D supplementation. And as a result of that, we get a lot of flus and colds, and we got a lot of other chronic ailments. So I think that the intake has to be much higher. According to many experts, the Vitamin D Council, uh, Dr. Michael Hollick, Dr. David Heaney, and, and many other people, Dr. Uh, Reinhold Weith at the University of Toronto, who's done a lot of research on this, he says that it's impossible to become toxic in vitamin D in Canada if you're taking 10,000 international units or less a day. So that's my recommendation. If you drank 40 glasses of milk each day, I'm sure you'd have the worst kind of diarrhea that you can imagine. But don't do that. I'm warning, don't do that. <laughs> My old friend, Dr. William Crook, you know, he made, a, he made actually a very good uh, practice out of uh, uh, telling all, all his, uh, his ch children, patients to stop drinking milk. And he found that when he did that, the incidence of middle ear infections, the incidence of asthma, and other chronic infections went to zero in his practice. So he found that 80% or more of his kids who had chronic middle ear infections uh, got rid of them forever by just stopping milk. So he was fond of saying that if you wanna be healthy, avoid milk. Now, if that's the only source of vitamin D, we're in trouble and we have to take a supplement of vitamin D, right? Emulsified vitamin D is basically a water-soluble form of a fat-soluble vitamin. There's a lot of people, as they get older, they're not able to absorb uh, vitamin D that comes basically through food, or they're not able to absorb a vitamin D supplement that is, that is oil-based. As a result of that, the vitamin D blood levels do not go up high enough to produce uh, a good anti-inflammatory response. So when you take an emulsified form, in just about everybody, it's virtually 100% absorbed. And so the absorption rate of an emulsified uh, vitamin, like vitamin D, is uh, tremendously higher. And, and that's proven by, uh, by doing before and after blood tests. The uh, raw ingredients for the omega-3 supplements are uh, coming from Norway and, and they are the, probably the uh, highest quality omega-3 from fish oil that you can get. And the thing is that all of the mercury is removed from there and it's very highly purified. Uh, we are getting great results in arthritis and many other inflammatory conditions with the omega-3s. Liquid formulas uh, in general are good for uh, certain classes of people who uh, don't like to uh, swallow capsules, uh, feel that the capsules upset their digestive system to some degree. Uh, people who uh, psychologically cannot swallow pills too well. I've seen some people, they can't swallow the tiniest little pill. I mean, they can eat a big steak, but they can't swallow a little pill. A lot of that is up in, in people's minds, but when you give them a liquid supplement, they seem to do a lot better with that. Uh, we also find that as people get older, it's harder and harder for their digestive systems to break down capsules. So for them, a uh, liquid form is, is far easier to use. Oh my God, probably over a thousand articles. Uh, I've written for, believe it or not, for Reader's Digest, Alive Magazine, Vitality Magazine, and now I'm writing uh, an article for Vista Magazine. So I've been everywhere. Well, I've written 12 books. Uh, the first book I wrote was called The Joy of Health, and then later on I added uh, The Return to the Joy of Health, and I also edited the uh, Encyclopedia of Natural Healing through Alive Books, and since then I've written probably another 10 books. The book that I think has had the greatest impact has been the Encyclopedia of Natural uh, Healing because uh, that has, uh, you know, a huge uh, number of topics. It was actually co-written by 60 different uh, doctors, naturopaths, homeopaths, and uh, herbalists. So I think that was the one that was the most popular. 
Well, I wrote, my, I wrote that book uh, at the request of uh, my publisher. I, pr I didn't have much of an interest in vitamin D when I was writing the book. But when I was doing a lot of the research, I was amazed to see all of the things that it could do if you get the levels high enough in your bloodstream. And the other thing that got me interested was the fact that I could help so many people uh, overcome chronic inflammatory conditions using high-dose vitamin D, which I couldn't do before. So I found that the more research I did on the subject, the more interested I became in the vitamin, and uh, now I'm a real advocator, promoter of using vitamin D. Did you know that vitamin D, if it was adequate in your system, could help uh, prevent or can help save the government $25 billion a year in healthcare expenses because we'd be able to prevent all these inflammatory conditions, uh, including cancer. We'd be reduce the risk of cancer, particularly breast cancer and prostate cancer, tremendously by using that. So we would save uh, the healthcare system over $25 billion a year. Well, I'm here to present a seminar on uh, natural ways of reversing inflammation and to control or prevent viral infections. Uh, a lot of people are very afraid these days of the uh, coming plagues, as they say, things like Ebola and uh, H1N1 and bird flu, etc., etc. I wrote an article recently which got published in uh, Vitality magazine on the subject, but I find that uh, there's a lot of misinformation out there and there's a lot of people uh, who are afraid that if they don't get their vaccines and uh, you know that they um, don't take certain drugs that they're going to be at risk for getting some of these uh, infections and I wanted to let people know that there are natural ways of preventing them. So that's what the topic of the seminar will be. Well I think our seminar sponsor is NACA and TriStar. Uh, those are basically uh, the company companies that uh, are sponsoring me in giving this lecture. I'm looking forward to a big crowd at the seminar and hopefully uh, a lot of word of mouth that uh, people should be able to do things on their own to prevent a lot of chronic illnesses, especially anything resulting from chronic inflammation and viral or other types of infections. Well, first of all, uh, I hope to live as long as Dr. Gifford Jones, and I'm going to apply uh, many of the principles that I've learned from him as well as from other doctors. Yeah, I think I probably will be giving seminars. I'll probably be still writing. So I, you, can, you can play this over again in 30 years and you could see. Well, I'm, I, I'm very impressed with National Nutrition. Uh, first of all, the uh, inventory that you have is amazing. But the other thing I'm very impressed with is the fact that you're doing a lot of um, educational work and that you're doing these kind of seminars and uh, interviews, which hopefully will help educate the public on how to take uh, nutritional supplements and also to help prevent a lot of chronic illnesses. So I'm very impressed with that. Well, I'm very impressed with National Nutrition, uh, not only the facilities, but also the fact that uh, National Nutrition is doing a lot of public education by providing uh, the public with seminars and videos. And all of these things uh, go a long way towards helping people prevent a lot of illness and treat things naturally without toxic medications. So I'm very impressed with National Nutrition. Well, I think the, the, the big thing is, that is public education. And uh, it's, it's really nice to see a, a company that is very knowledgeable in how to use uh, natural remedies and uh, providing, the, uh, providing this information to the general public because they're not getting it from any kind of medical, conventional medical sources, unfortunately.